trust of our Lord Sri Aurobindo. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, There are many things that have brought it about, a connection in past lives with the mother and myself, the development of your nature in former births, which made it possible for you to seek the divine, bhakti in those lives bearing its fruit now, finally the divine grace with always with love and blessing says our lord shri arvindo words of our lord shri arvindo from the collective works of our Lord Sri in the volume 12 book named Essays Divine and Human. Topic The Object of Our Yoga, page 96. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, The object of our yoga is self perfection, not self annulment. There are two parts set for the f- feet of the yogin there are two parts set for the feet of the yogin withdrawal from the universe and perfection in the universe the first comes by asceticism the second is effected by tapasya the first receives us when we lose god in existence the second is attained when we fulfill existence in God. Let ours be the path of perfection, not of abandonment. Let our aim be victory in the battle and not the escape from all conflict. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, Buddha and Shankara supposed the world to be radically false and miserable. Therefore, escape from the world was to them the only wisdom. But this world is Brahman. The world is God. The world is Satyam. The world is Ananda. It is our misreading of the world through mental egoism that is a falsehood and a wrong relation with God in the world that is a misery. There is no other falsity and no other cause of sorrow. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, God created the world in himself through Maya, but the Vedic mean of Maya is not illusion. It is wisdom, knowledge, capacity, wide extension in consciousness. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, Omnipotent wisdom created the world it is not the organized blunder of some infinite dreamer. The omniscient power manifests or conceals it in itself or in its own delight. It is not a bondage imposed by his own ignorance on the free and absolute Brahman. If the world were Brahman's self-imposed nightmare, to awake from it would be the natural and only goal of our supreme endeavor or if life in the world were irrevocably bound to misery, a means of escape from this bondage would be the sole secret worth discovering. But the perfect truth in world existence is possible, for God here sees all things with the eye of truth, and perfect bliss in the world is possible, for God enjoys all things with a sense of unalloyed freedom. We also can enjoy this truth and bliss called by the Veda, Amritam. Immortality, if by casting away our egoistic existence into perfect unity with His being, we consent to receive the divine perception and the divine freedom. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, the world is a moment of God in his own being. We are the centers and knots of divine consciousness which sum up and support the process of his moment. The world is his play 
with his own self-conscious delight. He alone exists, infinite, free and perfect. We are the self-multiplications of that conscious delight thrown out into being to be his playmates. The world is a formula, a rhythm, a symbol system expressing God to himself in his own consciousness. It has no material existence but exists only in his consciousness and self-expression. We, like God, are in our inward being that which is expressed but in our inward being terms of that formula, notes of that rhythm, symbols of that system. Let us lead forward God's movement, play out his play, work out his formula, execute his harmony, express him through ourselves in his system. This is our joy and our self-fulfillment. To this end, we who transcend and exceed the universe have entered into universe existence. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, Perfection has to be worked out. Harmony has to be accomplished. Imperfection, limitation, death, grief, ignorance, matter are the only first terms of the formula. Unintelligible till we have worked out the wider terms and reinterpreted the formulary. They are the initial discords of the musician's tuning. Out of the imperfection we have to construct perfection. Out of limitation to discover infinity. Out of death to find immortality. Out of grief to rediscover divine bliss. Out of ignorance to rescue divine self-knowledge. Out of matter to reveal spirit. To work out this end for ourselves and for humanity is the object of our yogic practice, says our Lord Sri Next topic, the hour of God. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, There are moments when the Spirit moves among men and the breath of the Lord is abroad upon the waters of our being. There are others when it retires and men are left to act in the strength or the weakness of their own egoism. The first are periods when even a little effort produces great results and changes destiny. The second are spaces of time when much labor goes to the making of a little result. It is true that the later may prepare the former, maybe the little smoke of sacrifice going up to heaven which calls down the rain of God's bounty. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, Unhappy is the man or the nation which, when the divine moment arrives, is found sleeping or unprepared to use it, because the lamp has not been kept trimmed for the welcome and the ears are sealed to the call. But thrice owe to them who are strong and ready, yet waste the force or misuse the moment, for them is irreparable loss or a great destruction. In the hour of God, cleanse thy soul of all self-deceit and hypocrisy, and vain self-flattering, that thou may look straight into thy spirit and hear that which summons it. All insincerity of nature, 
one's thy defense against the eye of the master and the light of the ideal becomes now a gap in thy armor and invites the blow even if to conquer for the moment it is the worst for thee for the blow shall come afterwards and cast thee down in the midst of thy triumph but being pure cast aside all fear for the hour is often terrible a fire and a will rend and a tempest a treading of the wine press of the wrath of god but he who can stand up in it on the truth of his purpose is he who shall stand even though he fall he shall rise again even though he seem to pass on the wings of the wind he shall return nor let worldly prudence whisper too closely in thy ear for it is the hour of the unexpected the incalculable the immeasurable made not the power of breath by thy pretty instruments not meet not the power of breath by thy petty instruments but trust and go forward but most keep thy soul clear even if for a while of the clamor of the ego then shall a fire march before thee in the night and the storm be thy helper and thy flag shall wave on the highest height of the greatness that has to be conquered Thank you.